Stumbling block in my life Them no wants to strive One day at a time to give more blessing Even in abundance sorry ain't got nothing Still a call for me king It's more blessing Give thanks to life loot and fair present The mindset Blessed love, manners and respect No give thanks and praise for life This is the Mindset Program I just am your host And I'm here with a great honor to be here with the yeah, man, give thanks, man. Rastafari. Yes, I give thanks. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you on your lifetime no, achievement. Yeah, yeah, yes. But we don't get it yet. We don't get it yet. No, the 24th. And it's the mindset, thought provoking. You know. I'm your host, Honorable Ida Star, and we're there with our brand new. Mindset series live on the YouTube. Subscribe, I just start Mindset channel, YouTube. Bless it up. Manners and respect, do give thanks and praise for life, health, and strength. We're there again on the rebound. This is the Mindset program, I just start. I'm your host, and we have a special guest. Um, we have Giza Graham scene and he's a computer genius programmer reggae artist a lot more stuff but he's a special guest on the program today um i want to welcome him again um to the mindset program blessed love honorable give thanks again you know yes sir great and i feel the hype on the platform here yeah man listen um for me yeah mm -hmm. it is um you you, you mentioned honor well i gonna give the, the honor because right mm -hmm. now for, for for me it's an honor to be on your, your your platform and i see it as a, it a divine a divine up, happenings yeah because now there are certain things that i feel that i want to share with you the audience and and I think I have a responsibility now to share some of these things. So um in particular I want to say um I want to apologize to the sister in Zinga. I feel that in some way I am responsible for what happened to her. Or at least I did not fulfill my responsibility to do what I could have done to prevent it. Because I have had experience of this lax thing with authorities and from my experience there is a simple 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 way to deal with this thing but if i did re 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 release this information long ago some of these things would happen so i want myself responsible for the fact that i did not release this information because i've had to deal with this thing on three separate occasions in africa and the first one was perhaps about I don't know, about seven years ago. But the, the last one was in 2018. And on each occasion, the, the authorities or uh, the school never want them, them the one have not for the draft staff. But after I presented certain, certain things to them, they give in because they had no option. Mm. But the third, the third time it happened, the school now, even when after present certain things, the school refused. So I then had to approach the Ministry of Education. And um, so I, I think yeah, I have a, a copy of the, the, me reading out the, the, the message that I sent to the Ministry of Education. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you, you, can, you can play that? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Um, we could just get that out. Um, all right, let's go. The subject of the email was unlawful conduct by a school. And this is what the email said. Greetings. I am a Jamaican who normally resides in the UK. But over the past 25 years or so, I've been a regular visitor to Africa and in particular to Kenya. Recently, I've been assisting a mother who has been having an issue with a particular school. And the school's position 
is one that I feel now needs to be addressed by the courts and by the country as a whole. However, we would ideally prefer for this matter to be resolved quietly without media that. publicity and without involving the courts. We therefore hope that you will liaise with the school okay. and get this sorted out quickly so the child no, can not, no, go to school. If you feel this is something that you ought to engage with, then please respond to this email and I'll send you further details. I expect to be in Kenya on Friday the 26th, where my telephone number is, blah, blah, blah. That was the email. Now, the further details, you know, I could have sent it as an attachment to this email, but I decided, no, I want to see how the Ministry of Education would respond to an email suggesting that a school is behaving unlawfully. Well, they'll never respond. So, a Friday, I touch in Kenya, and on the Monday, I go to the ministry in person. Well, after a while, I was ushered into a medium sized office with three people working in that office. I was now talking to a man, and this man I know, him I talk like him is a full supporter of Rasta. And I have to say at this point, for anybody else who might hear this message, that Rasta get support in East Africa at high level, high level. And I tell you that from personal experience. But obviously, not everybody is supportive, and that includes the school. So this man on our talk, like him, is one of them who support Rasta. But we have a good chat. But all the chat in my chat, I noticed that the man not looking at the documents that I send him, or that I bring to him. After a while, I'm telling to bring the child. So the next day, or the day, two days after. And by this time, by this time, you know, the child is over a week now the child has got to school. So anyway, I bring the child the next day, like I said, or the day after. And when we're going now, is this man and another woman in the office? The next, the next desk was empty. And them start by asking her something. But straight away, I got to say, hold on a minute. I'm the adult here, and I'm representing the child. So you're supposed to talk to me. I never get to say that because once I open my mouth, them ask me to leave the room. Well, it's for them room, and you can't go argue with them about them own room. So we leave. But we leave knowing that no matter what them do, them going to have to come my way, All right? Well, my brethren, what I'm do was a disgrace. And it's a pity I can't remember the man's name. Because this man's supposed to get sacked. This man and the woman. Them spend nearly half an hour. A bro beat the child. Hey, we can't tell all the thing what I'm saying to her. That the child break down in tears. The child is crying, crying. But eventually, the man come out of the room with the child. And I don't know if you ever see a bullfrog when it puff up, but I saw the man stay. Because no matter what I said to the child, no matter how them brow beat her, no matter how much she's in tears, she insists she not cutting her locks. I was so proud of this child, man. I can't tell how proud I was of her. So the man now had no option but to take us now to the very head of the ministry. So, when we're going now, I expect now that we're going to have a long discussion with these people, but it wasn't necessary. When I see the document and see what I talk about, the head, him, leave it up to his deputy. She pick up the phone, ring the regional office that deals with that particular school, talk to the, the man, and tell the man what to do. Tell me to go to the man and go to the man and write something, stamp it official and give it to me to take to the school. 
the next day the child was in school. So I'm going to show you now the document that the mother took to the school. It said, so by the way, I told her to take the document to the headmaster because it's the deputy head that she saw the day before. So this is what the document said. Dear sir, my daughter and I are particularly impressed by the performance of your school and so we were very excited yesterday to attend for my daughter to enroll. However, your deputy raised an issue which left us slightly deflated and I'm therefore writing to formally put on record my position regarding the matter in question. Because she had not yet started at your school, my daughter came yesterday wearing a hat. Your deputy asked her to remove it, and on seeing her locks, your deputy told her that she could not attend school with locks. I told her that my daughter normally wears a headscarf to school, and that her previous school accepted that. Still, your deputy maintained her position. I therefore feel that I should now point out the following. Every individual has an inalienable right to practice his or her beliefs so long as it does not offend common decency or impose on another person's rights or freedom. That is a fundamental principle that is enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the UDHR, and it is a principle that forms part of the law of every civilized nation, including Kenya. This principle is expressed in general terms in Article 2 of the UDHR, and it is specifically addressed in Article 18, which states, Everyone has a right to freedom of thought, conscience, and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief, and freedom either alone or in community with others, and in public or private, to manifest his religion or belief in teaching, practice, worship, and observance. That was the end of the quote. It really is not part of a school's function to try to hinder any kind of religious practice or belief. That would be a violation of Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, as shown above, and it would be a contravention of Kenyan law, which fully ratifies all the principles and articles of the UDHR. Furthermore, what justification can there be for preventing my daughter from wearing a headscarf for religious reasons while permitting Muslim girls to do so? It is difficult to see that as being anything other than discrimination against a particular religion. It could not be good to teach tomorrow's adults to be so intolerant of others, nor is it good to show them that those in authority will trample on their rights if and when they feel like doing so. I trust that your deputy will now put aside her prejudice and religious bias and will decide to uphold human rights and the law of the land. I further hope that this matter will not have to be referred to the Ministry of Education and or to the courts. Now, that's the document I want to ignore. Yes, sir. That's not why I had no to personally go to the ministry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, so what we are saying now is that if I did make people know from all them times that if people are aware of Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, if that was something that was known, then what happened to Nzinga would not have happened. And well, because of my general attitude of just keeping a low profile, um, I did not make an issue of it. So I apologize to her for not having brought this to the attention of the Jamaican public. And I apologize to the whole of Jamaica because I think if people were conscious of this particular article mm -hmm. of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, then nothing will go on, will not go on. See? But, so, I, I, like I say, I hold myself 
responsible for my act of omission. I should have, I should have brought this more to attention at the time. So I think we can now just bury this thing because um, the government, I'm sure that Jamaican government is also a signatory to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So if somebody did trim and Zynga, then they are breaking Jamaican law. It's not a thing like we just are asked for human rights because we like the word. No, it is against the law. What was done was against the law. And if the Jamaican government don't want to take it up, if the um, legal structure don't want to take it up, then the matter can be addressed to the United Nations because it's against the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But that's, that fact seems to have missed a lot of people. And that's why. I, so even the Ganja thing, you know, man, I forgot to go, I forgot to jail for Ganja. But as oh, long as, oh, 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 wait the Elder, I'm not going to the Ganja thing yet, wait there. Um, yeah, right. No, 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 let's say it. Maybe could just deal with the um, ends in the um, right. data um, issue here first. So, um, the, 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 that's breaking the laws, what the IS says. So, now, so what, what you think should really happen to, um, like the, 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 the police woman in question then? Well, Anybody who, any pro, anybody who breaks the law is supposed to be charged for breaking the law. Simple. simple. There's no, somebody can't be breaking the law and you just say, so you break the law, but it's all right. No. And if, and if the authorities, um, the legal authorities and the, the judicial system does not take the necessary action, then that action can be brought. Um, go to the, the United Nations. So it's, 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 it's a process for dealing with this thing. Mm. So what needs to happen now is all the noise and confusion just subside and just make the government know, say, yo, um, the law was violated here and it needs to be addressed. And it's not a, it's not a question of if. Once you have the law on your side, there's no if about it. This is what the law says. So you don't have to argue with them. About Article not 18. Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mm. Violation. And, and, uh, sorry? Violation. Yes. Article, Article 18. And um, I, I feel fairly certain that Jamaica is a signatory to that um, to the, the, the U, U, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. Almost all countries in the world are signatories to that. So once you break that, you're breaking the, the law of that country as well. So unless you make a grant to say now that they're not, they don't subscribe to the UDHR, then you have to ask now why you, why you as a country don't subscribe to it. It's a universal, universal declaration. That means it applies to the whole universe. Not just to Jamaica or to England or to so It applies right across the board. So the thing said. Yes, sir, right across the board. Yes. Yes, so there's um, just a natural procedure where um, it, it, it have to go through right now. And, yes. Um, yeah. Just a simple natural procedure. Someone broke the law. Simple. Someone. Yes, simple. Someone broke the law. And, <laughs> and, so, and so now, listen, ignorance. Again, it's, it's a legal matter, you know, mm -hmm. ignorance, ignorance of the law is no excuse. True. That is the police, right? Yes. You cannot say you did not know that that was the law. That means you must get away with it. If you are ignorant of the law, your punishment or whatever might be more lenient. 
but you still are guilty because you broke the law. So the thing said. See him so I see it, you know. Yeah, man, that's how it is. See him so I see it. You break the law, then you have you know, you to just like anyone else, you know what I mean? Simple yes. as that. Simple as that, because that is um you know that that is just a person you know just like anyone else and you violate that person right and you know the normal procedure have to take take its course you know and he, he, uh, police should know that because them enforce the law <laughs> so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, but you see you see what has been a problem is, is that um most people don't know that there's a specific law that addresses the matter. Mm -hmm. So what what the, the, the policewoman done, and I said, what she done? Because I wasn't there, so I don't really know. But if what, what is claimed is what she did, then what she did is unlawful, but a lot of people don't know that it's actually against the law. So people people now seem to be arguing that we have to try and get the, 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 the government or whatever to talk about this and to try and look at it but they don't seem to actually realize that it's, it's actually against the law. That's the point. And the government know this. It's not, it's, it's, it's nothing that they do not know. It's something that they do know. You know? But I can't tell them no, because I'm going to know. Right? Well, well, so, well, 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 these are, these, yeah. you know, you, you, you would expect, you know, people in these, um, in, in, in those, um, particular position, they would, you know, know, they would be ignorant of those, um, you know, information, you know, they would, they would have that part, you know, yes. as, as yes. someone who is running a country, you know. Yes, yes. But listen, right, I understand what you have said, right, um, but we have to know the all, all earth run, yeah, that means say, uh, it's a law, but, um, and they, they are supposed to know, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they do know because um, people don't necessarily always do their job exactly as they're supposed to go, do it by the book. Very, very few, very, very few things are done exactly by the book. So it's a, it's a law that could have been, well, anyway, there's supposed to be people who know. But so just to show you myself, when, I think a year ago, there was some issue with some child in school. They would not allow her. You remember? Yo? Why we can't hear you? Yeah, madam. You said there was a, a law in school. Yeah, there, there was a... There, no, there was a... There's an incident last year, I think it was. In Jamaica with her daughter. Yes. Yeah. Right? And it seems that there was a lawyer who, de who was dealing with it. So, it look. Right? Eh? Yeah, I think, I think a lawyer was involved in, in um, that, that issue as well. Right. But even though he was a lawyer, he yeah. still did not seem to know about Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And he's a liar. So there is things that you're supposed to, in theory, supposed to happen, but just does it happen. So I'm not going to say that the Jamaican government know. They probably do know, right? But I can't speak for them about what they know. What they know, <laughs> they know for what they don't know. I don't know. But what I do know now is that it's put up, I'm putting it up here now. So I can't say they don't know. I'm pointing to UHR Article 18. So now they know it, did they? They know it, did they? Right. So they can't know, so they don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that are the information where um, the liar previously should have, you know, probably should have um, highlighted that, you know, even this thing I wouldn't really, 
Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, so, but I, I didn't know all of this from about seven years now. But we know we not talk about it. I just deal with it on a on an individual case. Each individual case, I deal with that individual case. I don't make a big issue about it because um I kinda throughout my life I kinda stay away from the limelight really. But um it seems as if a time has come when I have to step forward and say certain things because there's a lot of things, lots, lots that people seem not to know or have what I think is the wrong view of it. So even when we talk about Rasta, they think I can talk about Rasta. I think I can talk about Africa. But unless you are here in the way that I have been, you don't know these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And you, 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 can have, you can have a completely wrong impression of what the reality is. True, true. I don't want to put on some of, some of those things now or another, leave that for another time. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I think we 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 go off to leave that for another time. You know what I mean? We, we, are, we yeah. But um, yeah, I hope that this information will um reach the masses and um one will ones would act upon the information you know what i mean um if you already you know already know you know what i mean aware of it you know is you know you can use the information now uh, take it onto you know a higher level if um you're not getting if you feel you're not getting the justice that you know what i mean you deserve you can um you know go up go above you know, certain heads, you know, if, if that is the case. Yes. Uh, by, the way, by the way, let me just add one thing to that, yeah? Mm -hmm. According to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, anybody can have their own personal religion. You alone can have a religion that you said that is my religion. And as long, whatever it is, as long as what you're doing doesn't violate, like I said, common decency, and you can justify that this practice is really your religion, it has to be allowed. Whatever it might be. Mm. If, if it doesn't violate another person's human rights, and it doesn't um, offend common decency, everyone has the right to observe whatever practice they they claim to be their religion. Now, people can people can put that, that as, an, as an excuse. So if you can justify that this is something that you really hold as part of your religion, it has to be allowed. Even if it's just you want to do it. <laughs> that's a thing to recognize but that's how it is yeah yes sir yes sir for real yes yes I hear the eye I hear the eye yeah yes sir da. yeah we give thanks um, give thanks um, for the energy and you know for the vibe where you know we are going you know, definitely keeping, you know, the fire, the fire blazing, you know what I mean? We're going to take a short break and um, when we forward, we, 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 we're going to go into Africa. Yeah, Africa. And I want up a lot of stuff. So, yeah, so if it's the first time there, they are tuning in on the platform. Um, please remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell. So whenever time we're here again, the item get notified, okay? Peace and love, Rastafari.